everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art serpent, and woo! I'm so glad to be here live. I'm gonna show you step by step how you can paint this very easy painting, super friendly for beginners, watercolor desert sunset. Now, it's a bit of a multimedia piece, and we are gonna use a little acrylic paint, but in full candor, you could use a black marker, you could use a Sharpie, or you could use black gouache or black watercolor. It would work with any of those. I'm just going to show you the uh, 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 particular uh, acrylic because it does such a nice matte deep black finish and it looks really good on this. So this is what we're doing today. It's easier than you think. You do not have to use the colors that I'm using. I'm going to color out, I'm going to call out their color family. So I'm going to be like, this is a red, this is a yellow, this is a pink, this is an orange. And you just grab those colors that you have on your palette. Because for this kind of sunset, um, it's really more just about the patterning of colors and allowing the bloom to happen. The other thing to know about what's happening on my painting that might not be happening on yours is that my canvas is tilted. So to see my surface better, I'm on a tilted table, like a drafting style table and it's going to let gravity pull the colors down a little bit. If you want exactly that effect, you'll have to hold your canvas up and I'll tell you when you're gonna to need to do that. So you won't have to wonder when am I gonna supposed, supposed to do that. I'm gonna tell you. Now on the mic is my husband, John. Also adjusting cameras. He has been dealing with a weird domino effect of pre-show crisis, like umbrellas blowing over out by the pool because I'm house sitting my mom's house and then, um, I lost my painting. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to reference it. I don't. I put it away. Have you ever put something away so brilliantly you can't find it no matter what you do? I put it away exactly where it goes, and that just threw me. I got a shipping from Graphics in, um, so I was super excited about that because it was like a bunch of stuff, like more than I could ever use, and uh, just I may have to do a giveaway. It's so good, but just so much stuff. So it was like. <laughs> Sorry, it took us a second to get here. I've got my tea. I'm going to calm down. I'm going to be super zen, and we're going to just get into it. Whew, I just looked over, and I'm like, man, are we even live? Did I even push the button, or am I going to make you say it all over again? <laughs> you did. I would just laugh. <laughs> That's happened, too. We're like, we're, we're like a minute <laughs> into it. We're like, we're about this far into it, and I'm like, hey, hey, it didn't work. <laughs> and she's like, What? But we're, but we're here today. So. All right. So let's go over the materials we're going to be using in today's show. I need to be little. Oh, yeah. I'll little, buttons. little buttons. There I am. I'm so little. Okay. So the first thing that I'm working on today is the Artistico Extra White 100% Cotton 140 pound 9 by 12 pad cold press. Do you have to have this exact pad? No. Do I recommend the pad? I do recommend the pad. But what you have to have is uh, uh, the 100% cotton really helps with this because it holds the water super consistently and does several stages of wet more effectively than blend paper. So I do recommend 100% cotton. I do recommend 140 pounds. I love the size nine by 12. I, you don't have to have cold press. Hot press is smooth, cold press is bumpy and that's a preference entirely. Um, it is nice that it is acid free. And another thing that's nice about this is it's a block. Now, I don't think it says it on the package, but that's what it is. And that basically means that all the sides are glued together. So the canvas doesn't warp or wave when you do wet techniques. That's, that's one thing that we have. So, but you can get those qualities that I just described to you in many brands. So pay just the words that you have to worry about. I'm going to use some artist tape today. Artist tape is a low tack uh, tape that doesn't tear your paper. And I'm going to use it just to tape off the edges uh, for this. The nice thing about taping off the edges of your painting, and it leaves a little room for the framer to do their magic. Um, I'm using my Art Sherpa Viviva color sheets. These are custom sheets that are, I had made for me that have my favorite colors from this company in it, but you can use pan watercolor, tube watercolor, powder watercolor, stick watercolor, crayon watercolor. They're all fine. The techniques will work with all of it. I'm also using 759 Mars Black from Abstract, and this is the matte soft body. Now there's a weird thing about this. If, you, if you're kind of a paint nerd like I am, you will know that there has been a multi-year big drama fight about the color black. 
um, because an artist, he, uh, Renish, he, uh, copyrighted the rights to use Vanta Black, which was the world's blackest black. It's a nanotechnology black. And then therefore no other artist could use it. This is not new in the art world, by the way, like Klein Blue. This is a thing artists do. So he did this, but a guy named Stuart Semple decided that was the worst thing he ever heard. And he went on an Instagram rampage <laughs> against him. And then being a proactive creative being that he is, he created his own version of the world's blackest black. And so that's been going on, except that along the way, it turns out that abstract acrylic from Sennelier made this and all the astronomers figured out that this is actually the blackest black. Well, it's it, under, cri under certain criteria. Under certain criteria, but it's criteria it's, that makes this look like a, the deepest silhouette you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, it's so we we really care about how it def how when you tilt it at an angle whether or not you see def diffracted light on it like when it tilts like that yeah that's a great example when you tilt it to the side it turns just to j this 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 so, so if dark, you have an dark, i'm dark, making black. myself like, a cup of tea it's me. like it's like a black hole of light it's so awesome and so uh <laughs> we there's a lot of astronomers and believe me it's it's still debated amongst astronomers which paint is the best but this consistently is a winner yeah among us i use it that's how and that's how we ended up with that's, that too that's that. how i ended up learning all about it <laughs> i'm gonna right. come here and tape the bottom so i'll tape this up i am going to burnish this down with my fingers i do have other burnishers and i'm getting into oil pastels um again um and i will probably have some classes on them here or on the acrylic channel i haven't made up my mind um but i'm demoing them at nanta this year and uh so you probably will benefit from that I'm taping off these edges. You can see I'm just using this to the edge of the canvas to just line that up. And this just gives me that nice edge for framing. That's all it does. You can use these pieces of tape repeatedly. So while painter's tape or low tack tape can be pricey, it's I can carefully peel these off and store these aside and then use them again like three or four times. So. Um, try to calculate that into everything. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get my paper wet. Um, that's really what's going to make this go. And I'm going to sip my tea and I am going to find my nice. chat yes. because I can't see that. I can't see the chat. You'll have to ask me. I can't see the chat today, guys. So John's going to ask me questions. P. Tea. I'm usually coffee, but I'm tea because we're moving to Ireland, so I got to get better at tea. So, Angela was wanting to know how does the Fabriano compare to the archers of the same weight? Okay, so I have a controversial opinion there because I painted with both. You um, used to be, I know, what I used to be arches all the way. Yeah. Um, I like the Fabriano better. Um, I like the uh, weight of the paper. I like the um, press the cotton. I like the sizing on the surface. Um, they're they're both professional, beautiful, heavyweight watercolors. They, you can get all the same weights, all the same things across both companies. Um, Fabriano is seven hundred years old making paper, and they got uh, they got a little bit hit on something a few years ago where a batch went wrong and they took care of it and they recalled it but then a lot of people were like super mad about it i feel like arch's quality has changed so it's really a preference um but i if you like arches give fabriano a try it yep. might give you yep. another company you really really like yeah i really like the paper too yeah i very much like it thank you heather that was such a Any good Oh, was it? Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Yeah. Any tips to keep watercolor from slipping or seeping underneath the edges that have been burnished? Um, if it's, if it's, if it's seeping, it's just not burnished. More tape. Yeah. It's just the tape or you have to press it down more or you might need to switch to hot press. Uh, Whenever I have that, it's just because I didn't burnish the tape down enough. Now, what I'm doing is I'm taking a big, nice wash brush and I am making sure that my paper is well wet and not sopping. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just making sure that the cotton paper is pulling in its water. Um, there is a thing in watercolor where it's hard to know how wet 
the paper needs to be. And what you're going to see here is that it's sort of shiny. Let's see if I can mm -hmm. capture this. Yep. But it there you go. It's about that shiny. I'm going to pull out my sheets. You grab your watercolors. And I'm going to start with my yellow and a round brush. I'm going to use a number 14 Raphael round. And I'm going to get some happy yellow. And I'm going to loosely brush out. And you can see I'm just I can take it down a little bit far, even though I know I'm going to come back. Now, above that, I'm going to come in with a little bit of my happy orange. And I am working wet into wet. Remember, this is on a tilt. So if you're painting flat, you'll have to tilt up periodically to get that particular effect. And I just, uh, luckily, somebody had mentioned that to me. They're like, oh, you should let everyone know that tilting is a big thing. Oh, you know what I did? I didn't do. I didn't leave out my sun. <laughs> oh, you didn't exclude the sun area. Didn't. We didn't even step this yet. We didn't even step this yet. You want to start over? <laughs> no, because no one's going to well, rewatch the start let's over. Let's give it to step one then. This is in step one. I'll show you how to fix it if you do something like that. <laughs> like what I just did there. Because it's fixable. Actually, easier than you think. So I'm just coming up with the orange. We had a lot of chaos right before the line. Now I'm going to go into the cherry blossom. If you're wanting to know what paints these are equivalent to, this is this is like a, a Quinn uh, red or in the, it's in the Quinn family, um, like an opera. It's like that. And I'm coming here. Notice that I'm very loose on these strokes, like I'm Just letting the paper do the work and I'm letting the water do the work. Now up here, it's getting a little um, dry. So I'll come back with my damp brush and re-wet it. And you can see it's buckling a bit. And the reason that it'll buckle is that um, the paper is very, very wet. But since it's stretched, it's going to dry and not give me any grief. I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue and Thalo green together and come right here. Foliage green, peacock blue. I'm just making a little turquoise. And then let's come to some purple. So I am pulling the brush across and I will allow this to, notice that it goes sweeping in a curve and opens up. Yeah. Right? Sweeping in a curve and opens up. And again, I'm on a tilt, so that's pulling down. Now one thing I can do is I can come here and kind of softly inner work that. Another thing that I can do is sort of take advantage of what's happening here and like go back into my, if I allow this to get to a mid dry where it's not completely dry, it's still a little damp, I can come back um, sometimes with other colors. I'm gonna get into my vivid red. And I'm gonna tap out a little bit of a dark Too much water on my brush there. So I don't want too much water on my brush. I want just the water on the paper to be what's blending this. But you'll notice that I can make some interesting little moments and get back into my pink again. And the flow down is again about my tilt. And I may have to start putting my watercolors flat, but we have not figured out how to do that between the shows on the camera settings yet. <laughs> yeah. Because it's hard to set and reset the cameras. Now that we have these in here. So you, you would not have the drawdown if you were painting flat. If you are painting flat, you'll have 
a more even dispersed bloom, but if you're painting on an angle, like I am, you will have a drawdown bloom. But you can see I can come through on my brush and actually take advantage of that moment. Come back up into the sky. I want to be a little bit darker on the purple. I can kind of pull this down in little interesting cloud-like shapes. If I load up real tight, and again, you use your purple on your palette, whatever palette that you have, right? You're just painting wet into wet, and you're growing from a gradation of yellow to orange to reds and pinks to blues to purples. That's all you're doing. Now, will there be a... Saturday live on the acrylic ch uh, channel? Yes, it's probably going to be a tint tone shade class. Tint tone shade? Yeah, if I can get the prep work done for it, that's what it will be. <laughs> so, yes, please come by Saturday for the acrylic channel. Uh, it's part of everything. My Tuesday and Thursday and Saturday classes over on the acrylic channel, probably for the month of March, are going to be techniques um, and color mixing because we're getting ready for acrylic April and we need to, to be ready because I'm taking you on such a cool journey. Notice that I'm kind of working that little brush there damp and I'm making those clouds work. Grab some of magenta. Magenta is a nice color and it will do this really nicely as well. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this. Um, you should let yours really essentially um, dry naturally, but um, I dr dropped a little purple, but it doesn't matter because we're going to have a silhouette here. <laughs> so like, That's okay. Okay, so you should let yours dry naturally because we're going along in the lesson. I'm going to use a hair dryer. Don't do that. I'm going to do that though. And that's just so you can see the next technique in a slightly timely way. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh so if you're at home and the reason why you want to let, to let it naturally uh do that is because of the bloom that it'll create and that's where the water will spread out into the fibers of the paper slowly and it'll it'll seep out in there and it creates this very very pretty pattern and so you know uh if you uh, if you let it dry naturally, you'll get that effect. It, it will you know you still get some some of the effect with a hair dryer. It's just not as pronounced, so to speak. So uh, you know if you um, if you want to find some resources, they're hidden in the links down below. Yay! Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, do all those kinds of things. We're gonna have a store open very soon. What does that mean? That means that like we've got hundreds and i mean hundreds like we have 1756 i think at the last count individual products to offer in our store all these different products so so many good things that are coming that's sort of been preoccupying my time so that's a fun thing we're doing this is a fun thing you're doing here's the next step here's the next step all right so the next step i am going to do sort of a distant mountain i want to preserve some of my yellow um, but I want to have that, you know, kind of desert style distant mountain. So I'm going to come here with just a dark value of orange. And I'm going to wander up and down along this little ridge. And paint this down. I don't have to worry about painting it all the way down. Uh, mostly because the black's going to come over it. But I just like to have a peaking distant hill that's in atmospheric perspective where it's a little bit orange and ready to go. But you can pull it all the way down if you want to. It's not going to hurt anything. Already it kind of gives you a bit of a landscape if you do that. Then once I start, I can't stop. <laughs> but there you go. I'm going to dry this again and then I'll show you how to fix my mistake with the sun. And then I'll make sure I show you how to do the sun moon technique uh, as a bonus at the end of this lesson because <laughs> I'll never leave you not knowing yeah so yeah thank you guys um there's some very exciting stuff with the store coming up yeah I see the chat going on I will totally pass that on Amy and uh, 
yes, that's kind of the story is why a lot of the Sherpa team have been like super focused on prod on on like administrative things because we've had to learn all sorts of wonderful things about electronic fulfillment and stuff. Oh, Amy says, "Cinnamon, uh, you may be having an A, but you may be having a day. But just know, you look so pretty." Oh, do I? Oh, good, because I'm having a day. <laughs> I just, <sighs> I got it into my head that uh, I could film an acrylic April before I did the lesson today. And you did. And did. But it just created a cascade of events. <laughs> The dominoes fell. Now, what did I put out? I put out white acrylic paint. This particular brand is acrylic. It's the um, professional heavy body paint by the same company that I pointed out the abstract from. This is a French company. It's one of the oldest paint companies in the world. And um, I'm using titanium white. You could use craft paint titanium white to do this. For acrylic paint, I am not mixing up my watercolor brushes and my acrylic brushes because that would harm them. You could also do this with gouache. And I'm just going to come here and paint my son in white. Annoying as that is. Initially, the first one I did, I just I left it with the white paper and was very careful. You could also probably use white out. Oh, yeah, probably. You know, gouache, oil pastel. I'm just getting it to the size that I want. It's a star. <laughs> it's a very big star on the horizon. You just paint it to the size that you like. I'm going to dry it and then paint a second coat, though, so that my coverage is really, really good. Thorough. Thorough. So just a second, I'm going to dry it, and then and then we're going to go forward to the black cactus. We're actually almost done. And the acrylic is the part that you, you know... You really just have if you if you preserved your white early on, then you wouldn't need to do this. But acrylic is a good way of just doing it, and actually, it had some texture, which makes it look really kind of cool. So you may want to consider this process, even if you're you haven't painted yet and you're going back to the beginning and going, hmm, do I want to preserve my white and use something like uh, frisket? I think that's what it's called. Maybe a little friskety thing, and then take it all up. Um, we have some new frisket that we're going to play with a little later. So if you don't know what frisket is. That's some cool stuff. That's some cool stuff. Frisket. Frisket is very cool. Yeah, you could frisket your son, your liquid graphics. You could just leave a resist. You could do a wax resist. There's a lot of ways that you could get it done. The reason I hadn't picked uh, acrylic as my primary way to get it done in the first place is that um, something happens in watercolor with acrylic paint over it called SID, Structural Induced Discoloration, and most unfortunate name for paint problem ever. And so you have to actually seal the paper underneath with the acrylic paint to not have the pigment seep up into the acrylic. Not a big problem with black, but is a big problem with white. So anytime you want to use white acrylic over the um, watercolor, you will want to do a couple coats to seal the paper. And trap the pigment underneath. Trap it. Okay. But now it's all trapped. White sun. Okay. We're going to dry that. Call a step and I'll show you how to do the cactus. Sounds pretty good. So now, yeah, the cactus stuff in the foreground is really pretty good. Now, the cool thing is, is that if you wanted to change up your foreground, this is the time when you could do it. Um, because the background part is, you know, that provides your sort of the, the color and stuff. But if you wanted to do a slightly different or tell a story in your foreground, this is a really good way of being able to go in and do that. Because you can, at this point, select, you know, 
how you would want to modify your little silhouette, and then you could just sort of sketch it on there and do that. And then that's a you know pretty universally cool thing. The if you're going to use your own silhouette, do be careful about left to right balance, so that you um, and you'll have to play with that. That's a more advanced concept of your own where you create balance and symmetry within your work. But uh, yeah. You can find the traceable on our website, theartshirt.com. You can download that, and then that'll help you so you don't have to freehand or draw it, like if you see Cinnamon doing that here just in a few minutes. She may freehand it. Yay! And I'm going to put out my black paint now. Squeeze it on out. Shouldn't take much more than this. And I'll give you guys a bonus free extra class lesson in this one to just show you the original intended technique and, and I'll show you a bonus thing. Just because I love you guys and I appreciate you and I appreciate you uh, hanging with me and giving me your time, so. Me too. I'm still using, this particular brush is a number 10 Raphael Textura. They're just a good acrylic brush, but you could use any brush. You don't have to, if you're only occasionally using um, acrylic for these kinds of techniques, you can absolutely um, like just get a less expensive brush. I'm just bringing the black across. I'm going to build up, and I know that. I know that my landscape is going to build up, so I leave room for it to do so. And the first thing that I'm going to do is paint the whole bottom with a black first. It just gives it a nice little base coat. Gives it a nice little base coat. And it will dry very, very matte. This particular one will. Now, they were asking about when you're painting the white. Yeah. Would gouache have the same, uh, would it have the no, same No, gouache problem? actually sits on the watercolor without that. So the gouache won't uh, bleed up. which is why sometimes artists prefer the gouache. Or good ones shouldn't. It's a lot about how the paint dries um, and that this is a polymer, right? And the little polymers pull up and so there's some moisture and stuff that pulls up through the surface to the top. So once I have that, we can call that a step, and I may go ahead and dry that so I don't drag black paint all over my surface. That's and if I'm going to dry yeah. it anyways, I'm going to touch up the top of my sun again. We'll re-step this when you come back after the drying. Just to make sure it's nice and covered. So, just thoroughly dry that. Make sure it's and thank you, Jen. We appreciate it. Appreciate everybody. Oh my gosh, I saw. Who else did we get up here? A Patty. Thank you, Patty. So nice to see you guys here. We really appreciate it. Man, it's been a little bit of a chaotic day because we've been doing some acrylic April stuff and other, you know, Art Sherpa business, which all results in fun art stuff. But, you know, it's what we have been busy doing today is kind of, uh, you know, taking care of all of the office stuff, um, working on the store. As I said earlier, that's been pretty good stuff. Um, you can see as the paper dries, the sunset just gets prettier and prettier. Yeah, we'll restep this. There we go. What is restepping well, mean? That means, so, so uh, I put the step six up before you drew your hair dryer, but now I put it up afterwards. So, because this is where step six really begins. Oh, okay. So I'm thinning the acrylic paint with water so it has a nice flow off of my brush. And sometimes I roll and thin. Now the first thing is I want to do my cactus. I got to decide how tall my main cactus is and I need to leave room for like arms and things. So I'm going to come over definitely a few inches and then I'm going to just draw a straight line. 
that is the main body of my main cactus. Once I paint this little finger in, all other fingers become easier to deal with. Right? So you get that first one in and you want it to be thinnest at the top. It can be a little thicker at the bottom, but you don't want it to get thicker at the top. Then I'm going to come over here and slightly down from the top, I'm going to make a little joint in. This arm won't be thicker to, than the cactus it's attached to. So sort of tree rules apply. I'm going to come over to this side and this one will be stepped down from the other two. This one's going to be a fun one because it's going to be a double joint. Now a cactus this size is like uh, really old. Yeah. They're like over 100 years old. And I kind of thickened the base because I had such a thick little branch that I had to thicken the base to yeah. justify the branch. Ah, uh, because the branches aren't bigger. That's right. Roll out, and but I'm going to make that little adjustment branch. I love the little attached branch. So if you, so Pax's mom was <laughs> curious, like, would it not be better to mix burnt sienna and ultramarine blue for the black? No, would not be as black of a black. It That's not even necessarily chromatic black. The chromatic black is alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. Uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna makes a beautiful gray. Um, but you would still deal with the um, refraction, like it would definitely be like a refraction. Yeah, this is the ultra black paint. Yeah, this, you any black, any Mars black is going to give you a matte black. The one I showed you is just going to give you a super, super matte black, like super, super matte, matte black. Um, you can get great chromatic blacks. Um, um, less than I just did, I was using Doxine Purple as a chromatic black because in relationship, it red is black to the eye. Um, and there are several great mixes to mix your own black. Um, but the, the best one, I think, is the alizarin crimson and the ultramarine blue. I like this one because it has carbon. It has like a lot of carbon in it, which makes, oh, it, yeah. which makes it so that it just absorbs the light. And it doesn't, it doesn't give off any coloration, so to speak. So it's just black. All right, let's call that a step, and then I'll add uh, other little cactusy details. Right, because we got to add cactusy details. Step seven. So um, now that said, if you wanted a gray for your silhouette, because I hate to ever say anything like completely alt like you could see there's no there's no, no wrong answer i mean like it just isn't wanted. it isn't a wrong answer and i wouldn't want it to seem like it was because it isn't i'm gonna make a little oval just sitting over my son being a little oval and next to it i'm gonna attach another little oval and a little bump is gonna attach them a little round bump I'm very familiar with this cactus because my horse threw me in this cactus a lot. <laughs> Had a lot of time to think yeah. about the shape of this cactus and how it feels. And so, yeah, I think I was like, I don't want to ever be overly like, no, except the only, th only things I'm like, no on is don't use a uh, glass from a picture frame as a palette. That's a no, no, not under any circumstances. Don't do it. It's super dangerous. Um, uh, and don't set fire to your paint. Don't heat your paint with a torch. I'm very, uh, very adamant about that. Adding another little joint here. Because uh, that releases uh, potentially potential super chemicals into the air that float in the air and get in your lungs. And who knows what they'll do. And they haven't done a lot of studies on what happens to it. But if you ask a fireman, he'll tell you you don't want to be near any plastics that have melted. And without specialized equipment and acrylic paints are plastics. I am adding, I think I'll add another little. There. 
That's my weird cactus today, isn't it? Gorgeous little prickly pear. I like that. Now let's come through here and we're going to add little... Let's add some rocks. And I just kind of take the brush and make rough ground. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Sometimes you can add a little like stack stones. You're like, oh, maybe it's like a Zen stones there. <laughs> because there's rocks on the desert ground. Now, if you want a video on all the blacks, I have an older one that explains all the different black pigments and then also how to make all the chromatic blacks, and most of them. And then we have a secret uh, painting in it where we do, that we do. All right, let's make another bigger, larger prickly pear over here. So again, we'll make a little oval. Once you know how to make these, you'll be like, I'm going to make these all day. And I'm going to be like, I understand. Because it's super duper fun. When you have that, I do think it's a good idea to grab a liner, right? So that's a fine detail brush. And I'm going to come here and thin my black paint. Go ahead and make some little needles. But I am serious about not using torches on your paint. Right. Uh, and I know that's demoed out there and and I um, but if you do any research on what happens when you start getting curly paint over 111 degrees, um, you're not even supposed to be near your dryer when you heat it because it off gases formaldehyde. It does not off gas just generally. Just sitting in your room at normal temperatures doing normal paint things doesn't do a thing. It's very inert, very safe paint. But when you start setting fire to pigments and plastics, it gets weird. Is what I would say. So you can see the little cactus needles are a really fun element of that silhouette, aren't they? There's no wrong cactus needles. They go all the different directions. You won't be sorry that you made them. Sometimes they come out in like little three clusters because they're really on these little spots that I just like loose and paint them. Again, you're not going to be sorry you put in cactus needles. They just make the painting more interesting. Okay, let's call that a step. So that's its own little step. You guys ready? Now we're going to do the rest. Now over here, we're going to kind of start doing some grasses and some things. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up some um, little like stalks going up. And I may even use this liner brush because this brush is giving me multi-lines. I just want stocks. When I have those long variant style socks, I'm going to go onto the toe of the big brush, the big round, and I'm going to make a top 
for each of these. And I'm going to come in on the toe. Kind of like a little zipper. And then I'm going to make little grass lines out. And at that point, it's perfectly fine that it's a little bit fluffy because that's great in the silhouette. And I'm going to come do some more over here. And a little kind of fan. I'm going to rinse that out. I'll go ahead and get my detail brush again. Give myself some like kind of thoughtful little grasses like you do. And that's all you got to do to paint that desert sunset silhouette. But I promised you a bonus so I could explain to you what I was going to do if I had not painted it <laughs> with acrylic, which I'm going to give you if John will give me a fresh cup of water. I will do that. I'll do, do a that. little demo sure, painting sure. for you guys to understand how that might be done. Similar technique, but with just uh, the, um, those just need to be fresh, with just uh, resist because it's actually easier to keep things like your moon or a bright white area unpainted um, and not get water on it, not get paint on it. So I'll show you how to control the water, how to control that flow. We'll do uh, a s different scene, but similar in concept and it'll be fun. So um, if you have a second pad, it's like a good time to get it. Remember, you can use markers here. A anything that you want to use for your black silhouette. Another fun thing you can do if you're a parent and you want to have fun with your kid is you get them to draw their silhouette in black crayon. Um, and then you go, or black oil pastel, and then you do the watercolor over it. And you, if you had a white crayon, you could do that there. And you could do the same thing using the wax as a resist. So there's a lot of fun ways to make it go. I will go ahead. I'm just going to... Um, pull this off the pad. I want this all the way dry. I don't remove the tape until my paper is thoroughly dry. Like sometimes I wait a day and then I very gently peel back the opposite way I put it down. That makes sense. Now I'm going to use my tape to do this next bit just because it's easy. Get a 2B pencil. <laughs> Circles are kind of a challenge. So sometimes I like to use a stencil or a circle tool, right, to draw that. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and say right here, kind of low in the circle, I'm going to draw a circle. <coughs> okay, so it's, I've drawn the circle there. I'm going to get my round brush. You grab whatever watercolor you have. And let's I'm going to go ahead. This has got to rinse that out. I had a lot of pigment still on there too. Let's go ahead and pre-wet the paper, but we're going to very carefully go around our circle and not paint it. And we're not going to paint outside of our circle either. Yes, you could use this liquid masking agent. That would be just fine. You wouldn't be sorry that you did. Um, but you know, it slows you down. And on this one, you can you can handle just painting carefully your water. So there, wet the paper. Sometimes I'll change my angle of how I look at the paper, or if I, I can tilt the pad too is another way of seeing it to see if I missed painting anything. Now I'm going to come here into my yellow. You grab whatever yellow you have, and I'm going to go around. That 
that sun and I'm going to go ahead and just brush up a bit and I'll take this all the way down. Let's go into our orange. And I'm going to loosely paint out a bit of the orange sun before that dries. I'll blend that out a bit. Now I can come back with my yellow and actually work it back into the orange and I'll blend on the paper. be very orange up top. Again, remember that my pad is on a tilt, so I do have gravity that I'm having to work around that maybe you're not. John, do you have that uh, set on the right color scheme? Uh, what do you mean? Is it, it seems washed out in my oh, monitor. Oh, it may be a little bit, uh, but you know, it's uh, on the overhead there. It's let me see here if I can adjust, see if there is, it, sometimes those colors are so. Okay, so I have the orange on there and I'm gonna come up now to my vivid red and I'll just work the vivid red from the top. It's just a little dim because sometimes I have to see the, the, uh, the lines there. Okay, we were trying to see pencil lines. Yeah. Yeah. The pencil lines are just a guide to know where to paint and to not paint. Notice that I'm sort of like, look at this little wiggle that I do. I'm wiggling the brush around and then when I release it, it's going to blend out and become like if I push up and I go down and I make kind of a general like wandering little cloud shape, the paper's wet. The cloud's going to continue to like kind of diffuse. It's a lot easier to get those clouds in, I think, on watercolor paper. I'll take a little bit of that color down because that's sort of interesting. Maybe go back into my yellow. Kind of yellow around that sun. If you want to go back into your uh, purple or magenta, and actually I think a combo of purple and magenta here, where I take a little bit of my purple and magenta. So magenta would be like your fuchsia pink, your magenta pink, and then your purple, and you would mix them together. And maybe I'll make a little bit of uh, some dark. Sometimes in a sunset sky, what you get is you get little dark clouds. So I'm gonna make little up and down little shapes. Bonus lesson. Bonus. Bonus. Because I had a weird moment at the beginning of the class. That'll happen. I can make little stratas going up because sometimes clouds will do that. They make like a patterns. Oh, that's just lovely. Okay, so now, now I am going to dry this. You let yours just paper dry because the more it develops as it dries, the prettier it gets. Yeah, same as, same as before. Just uh, if you let it dry naturally, it will do a, it'll have more of a blooming effect. And you can sort of experiment with that because different papers will have different rates of doing that. And uh, you may like it better one way or another. Again, there's no sort of right, there, there's no definitive one way of doing anything in here. So you can always go about it, uh, you know, always about it different ways. Can you say that about the crayon? Hmm, I'll go back and 
see what some of that was questions there questions, okay questions. and yeah well i'm finishing this up i'm going to grab my liner brush in my mars black and i'll finish this piece up and you guys can do like an ama ask me anything while i'm doing this i'm gonna just make little grass marks up just make one i'm gonna put my glasses on so i see better because i'm gonna do little grass tips and little florals in here in silhouette see how we're doing a little grass tip like to make lots of little randomized grasses You have questions or no questions? Oh, so far everyone's saying how cool this looks. Just being light and loose about it. It's easy to build in. It's hard to take away. So it's important to, you know, pay attention to what you got going on. I'm going to do some little florals. Little touch, little touch. On the little flowers, sometimes I like to do them like uh, three, three petaled. Just kind of works really well to imply blooms. Making little, little flowers there. You'll notice when I'm doing silhouette flowers that I'm leaving that open area in the flower. That really helps uh, keep it feeling like a bloom. Some little, like, different little leaf scratches. Nice to have different little leaf scratches. Work those up here. Now I can get my big brush involved, but I'm just working these little details out for right now. Adding little details, little touches, little, little textures. And then when I have the delicate bits in, because those are the hard ones to get in, I can come back with my larger round that tends to um, kind of grass out the, the toe of it splits and opens up and kind of flares out or fans out the grass. So then we can fill in that silhouette down there. So that's kind of really the original little technique that um, I did. And you can see that the um, 
paint really does a good job of giving you that black silhouette. Kind of little coverage there. Another thing that I can do on a silhouette painting like this, if I was just feeling inclined to, you can add some little birds in the distance. Sometimes it's nice to do because they imply that the world is uh, full of life. Who isn't excited about that? There's a little flock flying in. So that's your bonus lesson. It's a bonus, and it's very, very, um, everyone has said it. It's very poppy. It's very, it, this, is, this is really just sort of a surprise. So, you know, you can, you can get this out of it. Right? You get this out of it. You get that out of it. it. The technique will work for anything. And again, you'll get less fall down if you are not on an angle. But if you want that bloom down where it kind of falls down, it looks like it's raining, then you'll have to tip up because I am tipped. Actually, most of my watercolors, I'm fighting the tip. Um, and here's what the acrylic looks like uh, on the sun now that it's uh, dry. So it's not bad. It's not a bad look. I just think... Um, the paper being the white is so much whiter. Mm. I actually like this sunset quite a lot. You know, so it works out. Every time it's just a little bit different and it's a little bit fun. Um, I have a new uh, set of designs coming out. So if you purchase the watercolor kit and you're sitting on one of these and you've painted all your line and washes, good news. Really soon, four new designs are coming out and they're super cute. <laughs> super it's, cute you've seen kind of peaks and stuff of yeah. some of them um in the shorts and everything so uh those little designs end up becoming bases and then i've done some other things like because i wanted to make sure we had stuff for all ages that you maybe haven't seen yet and will see coming up um i'm coming up for acrylic april yes i will be live saturday we're gonna work on a where it's either gonna be tint tone shade or um, color schemes, but it's probably going to be tint tone shade. Hey. And for those of you that were worried that your color wheel class kind of went by real fast, we weren't trying to define all the words on the color wheel. Those are different days in the, in the course. It's just knowing that they're there. And also they're defined on the color wheel. Like they give the definition to you. So you don't have to wonder. You just have to know how to read it to know where stuff is or to even look at it and go, that's what it is. But if you're wanting more deep dives on what all those terms are, that's coming up and it's going to be coming up all March. Before March, April. Yeah. yeah. Then it's April 1st and we start acrylic April and I'm going to release acrylic April probably earlier this year. Like, like the minute I have the last thing ready to go, it's going to start going out and you guys are going to see early, early, early. <coughs> so I have some questions. Mm. Okay. So Jen was asking, how do you know when my paper is dry enough for the acrylic? Okay. So it will no longer have shine. It can still be cool to the touch. When the paper is still cool to the touch, it is not completely dry. It is dry enough to take the acrylic, but if you were to paint on here, um, you might not get the crispest edge like you would on completely dry paper. So sometimes when you, when you feel it'd be like, it's a little cool, but it doesn't feel wet, that's partially dry. And that's really good when you're doing uh, uh, botanicals or realism and stuff where you need um, different stages of diffusion. Um, but for acrylic, as long as it's not shiny and it's not wet anymore and there's like you can see that there's no sheen to the uh, water on the paper and when you touch it it's not wet at all it's just cool that's an, that's enough to take the acrylic but if you're trying to do a very crisp uh, watercolor technique you would want to wait a little bit longer till it was completely dry bone dry or if you wanted a slightly diffused technique uh, where it's not just a, such a crisp edge you would want it exactly at that cool moment is and paying attention to how your paper is drying is really nice the cotton holds the water longer so that's really really nice you don't have to work quite as fast it may seem like i'm working fast but not that fast okay guys thank you so much for putting up with me i know it was crazy getting started and crazy getting going <laughs> but i hope the bonus lesson made up for it yeah
<laughs> and I want you to know I really appreciate you all. Um, if you like this stuff, normally we like we have all kinds of lessons you can go check out. They're very tidy. They're I'm not saying that we don't chat. We always chat, but they're down to business and sequential and all of that all the time. So you know, uh, check those out. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, more watercolor classes are coming up. More uh, watercolor kit designs for the line and wash are coming up. More fun paintings like this one will be coming up. They may be recorded and dropped um, just because i am got so much going on right now. And I am going to try in April to keep the watercolor classes going for those of you doing watercolor and aren't doing acrylic April. But I'm not going to do a daily watercolor painting in April because that would keep me <laughs> I get that suggestion a lot and I so appreciate that suggestion that anyone would love me enough to be like you go to air live every day in watercolor too and I'm like maybe not <laughs> but I love that you're that excited about watercolor and I love that you enjoy time with me enough to want that so I really appreciate that but I'm probably going to just have to keep the watercolor classes going at their regular pacing during the acrylic April mayhem um that's all the deets, mm. right? Yeah. That's all the deets. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up and stretch a little bit because I've been here a second this morning. <laughs> <laughs> be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at a watercolor pad real soon. <laughs>